Shalom, Shalom, Israel. I want to open up and I would say call Allah to help by Shema Masech Al-Rashah, Barakatha Yehala by Shema Al-Rashah. Right, so uh, today through the Spirit, I want to over some precepts dealing with um, being young in this truth. Right, that's the topic for the day through the Spirit. Right, hey, you got a lot of young men with, um, in this truth, a lot of young men and also a lot of young women in this in this thing. Right, we got to know how, how to carry ourselves through the Spirit. Right, first, we got to recognize that a to Most High, you know, He set up certain young men within the Bible, man. It's not just elders in this thing, right? A the Most High, even in, in the Bible, even in the ancient days, had a young men, right? I'm um, doing doing the work, doing His will, right? This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter nine, verse three, and ordered the world of um, so like it almost, oh uh, yeah, come sorry, three, and just and like order the world according to equity and righteousness and just and execute judgment with an upright heart give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne and reject me not from among thy children for i thy servant and son of thy handmaid am a feeble person and and of a short time and too young for the understanding of judgment and laws, right? So a King Solomon was set up, right? When he was a young man, right? To teach us wisdom of Solomon 4 through 5. This is one of my favorite scriptures, right? Solomon was very humble, right? And he was a young man, right? Asking for the most high to bless him with understanding of judgment. Asking for the most high to bless him with the understanding of the law, right? Asking the Lord for wisdom, right? And that's a mighty thing. Right, I'm gonna get um Second Chronicles. You know, Second Chronicles thirteen. All right, it's a Second Chronicles chapter thirteen, verse seven. Right, and um and there are gathered un unto him vain men, the children of Balal, and just and have strengthened themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was young and tender hearted. Right, so a Rehoboam, he was king, he was the son of Solomon, right? It was set up as king after Solomon, right? After Solomon's 40 year reign, right? It says Rehoboam was young, man, he was a young king. Solomon was a young king, and hey, the Mosai was tending with these people, the Mosai set them up as king, man. Solomon and Rehoboam were two kings, and they're both described as being young, man. And Rehoboam as tender hearted, right? I'm gonna also get uh, Jeremiah. So I hear Jeremiah 1, right? This is Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 6. Then said I, O Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. And so Je hey, the most I was dealing with Jeremiah when he was a child, man. We don't know how old Jeremiah could have been 12, could have been 8. Jeremiah could have been um, 16, 19. Well, we don't know how old, but hey, the, the most I was dealing with Jeremiah since a young age, man, when Jeremiah was a young man, when he was a child. Right, but Yahweh said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Right, so Jeremiah was a teacher ordained by the Lord, and he was a hey, just a child. Hey, God, I'm gonna hop down, I'm gonna jump down to verse 10. I, I like verse 10. Right, this is Jeremiah 1, verse 10. See, I have set this day. So like it, uh, Jeremiah 1 verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant, man. So if Jeremiah was a young man, but the Most High blessed him with the authority to destroy nations. He was set up over nations. Does that mean Jeremiah was walking around with a, a big sword and was a mighty warrior? A son of David, <laughs> la ah, right? Jeremiah, our face from Most High, man. It said Jeremiah's words were fire. Let me get that in Jeremiah 5. And hey, this is when Jeremiah was a child, man. Jeremiah was an excellent teacher, all praise to the Most High, even as a child, even as a child, right? So Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore, thus saith Shahawah, good kind of hosts, because they speak this word, behold, I will make my mouth. So like it, I will make 
my words and thy mouth fire, and this people would. It shall devour them, man. And so the Most High made Jeremiah's words fire, man. He was, hey, he was devouring Israel and it, and also the nations, right? He was prophesying against kings. You read that about that in Jeremiah 28, right? But hey, Jeremiah was a young man. The Most High was dealing with him. Jeremiah was set up as a teacher, you know, and he was pulling down and destroying nations. And hey, it's also said, it didn't say only pulling down. Right, to build and to plant, man. Jeremiah was helping build up the nation, man, for the men that wanted to listen, for the men that wanted to hear. Hey, Jack, Jeremiah was leading them through the spirit, man, telling them if you want to be saved, man, go ahead and go into Babylon, do what you got to do. The most high is going to have you do other peacefully, right? And then it is what it is, All right? So, hey, Jeremiah, as, as a child, was destroying and building up Israel. Destroying the heathens and building up Israel. I'm gonna touch on First Timothy four, but we're gonna mainly touch on this later. Later, right? This is First Timothy chapter four, verse twelve. Let no man despise thy youth. Right? Uh, First Timothy is known as the as one of the three pastoral um, uh, epistles. Right? First Timothy was written by Paul to Timothy. Right? And uh, Timothy was a young man. Right? And Timothy when he do research on uh, Saint Tim on Timothy, right? Timothy, so like Timothy was a bishop, man. Right? He was a bishop of um, Ephesus. Let's get this. Saint Timothy. Uh, I'm just trying to get it real, real quick, man. Right? And Timothy was a young man. Come, huh. was a early Christian evangelist. And the first Christian bishop of Ephesus. So, hey, Timothy was a bishop, man. He was over men. Timothy was over, hey, he was over elders. He was over the church in Ephesus, all right, being a young man. And that's mighty, right? So, you kind of want to um, go into some precepts, right? Let's get Lamentations 3. Right, this is Lamentations chapter 3, verse 27. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Hey, so the Lord said it's good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth, man, because it's truth, man. This truth is very hard. It takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of humility. It takes a lot of, um, I already said this, it takes consistency. It takes fortitude. It takes strength. Right? This truth is very hard, man. This is a yoke, man. This is, you read about that in Matthew chapter 11, right, how this is a yoke, Right? He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him, man. Hey, so being a young person, man, you be maybe at lunch, maybe in college, you may be in uh, high school, you know, hey, this man is sitting alone and he's staying silent, man, in his youth. Why? Because his yoke is heavy, man. You may be around your family members that may be wicked. All right, it's okay to sit alone. It's okay to keep silence, man, because you're bearing a yoke in your youth. Right, because he hath borne it upon him. He putteth his mouth in the dust. If so be, there may be hope, man. He putteth his mouth in the dust. And he's praying, man. This young man, he's praying. Praying mightily and fervently through the Spirit. Right? He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled full with reproach, man. And you may give reproach, man. Because you may have used to be the guy. You may have used to play football may used to have been pretty good and but now you can't come to practice on saturdays right now they see you walk around with fringes now everybody's laughing they all they all used to um them go to parties but now that you're at home they ask him where is that about is i at you know talking about all types of folly and madness right so a hey, he he giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him he is filled full with reproach, for the Lord will not cast off forever. And so the Most High, hey, he's, he's not unrighteous to hey, bless us for what we did through the Spirit. That's what the scriptures say, right? So the Most High is not going to cast off this young man forever, right? Come on. But through, but through he, so like, but though he caused grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. 
for he doth not afflict willingly nor agree that the children of men to crush his feet I'm mean, like it to crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth and so you know, the most high willing man the most high not, she's not trying to destroy you right it's really to build you up and really to strengthen you right because hey you know although he causes grief yeah he's going to have a multitude of mercies man all right let's get um proverbs 20 right so we all got all the young men and young women that little women watch this video man we all got to bear that yoke man you may be all alone right you may sit by by you may sit by yourself and that may be what it is all right let me go to um jeremiah chapter 15. all right this is jeremiah 15 verse 17. i said not in the assembly of the mockers nor rejoice I sat alone. Hey, Jeremiah, the child, he was sitting alone, man. You may be in, in the lunchroom with you guys. You may have been in gang affiliated. And hey, you got to separate from that. You may have been around some guys. All they want to do is smoke weed and have fun. And hey, you got to separate from that. When you come into this truth, you got to bear that yoke, right? I sat alone because of thy harem, for thou hast filled me with indignation, right? So, hey. That may just be what it is. I mean, we may have to sit alone in, in this thing, man, being young men. Well, let me get, um, actually, I, I'm not going to get that. I'm not going to get that. It's a lot of you. Right? I'm going to Proverbs 20. And this is Proverbs chapter 20, verse 29. The glory of young men is their strength. Hey, so that's the glory of young men, man. And young women, it's a strength, man. It's strength that you can stay up late wake up early you can study hard while right? you're in school you already know how to study lord women man you memorize the precepts memorize the facts you doing research and that's the glory of a young man that's the glory of a young woman right it's their strength all right so hey you got to magnify that especially brothers and sisters that are in school man then maybe don't have a job right? you can have a lot of free time upon your hands all right, let's be diligent. Let's be fervent. You know, let's stay girded in this thing. And Lord willing, man, be strengthened. All right. And the beauty of old men is the gray head. All right. So, hey, that, that strength, man, that strength. While we're young, man, hey, we got to make sure we put forth our best foot. Before you have kids, before you maybe have a wife, before, you know, you're working a for real, for real job. You know, while you're under your parents' house, man, or even when you get out of your parents' house, while you're young in general, while you have that able body, that strong body, while you have most of women that sound mind, right? Put forth the work, right? This is First John chapter two verse fourteen. I have written unto you fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men, because ye are strong. Hey, so the young men are supposed to be strong. The young men and women are supposed to be strong, man. You're supposed to be memorizing precepts through the Spirit. You're supposed to be researching and studying facts, going through the history, going through the books, and you, and you going to the library, right? You're supposed to be strong, man. Huh? And the Word of God abideth in you. Hey, the Word of God, man. Hey, why? Because the brother's studying, man. Because he's a young, strong man, most of our women. The Word of, of God is abiding in him. All right, because all he does is study. And I know certain brothers, all they do is study. All they do. That's all they do all night long. They barely sleep. They barely rest. They study. You know, they may call brothers, check on brothers, see how they're doing. All they do is they do the work. And that's the word of God abiding in you, right? And they have overcome the wicked one, right? So, hey, being young men and young women, man, we got to overcome Satan, man. It's very, very hard. It's very hard being in, this, in these vile, contemptible, destroyable bodies, man. It's very hard, right? But, hey, while we're strong, and this is the time where we can get gird up our loins, right? And most are willing, man, to overcome the wicked one. All right, I'm going to get uh, Luke chapter 18. All right, this is Luke chapter 18, verse 16. But Yahweh Shai called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. 
for as such is the kingdom of God, man. And so, and the kingdom is going to be filled with children, man. It's not going to be just people that are 30 and up. You got to be 30 and up to get to the kingdom. That's off. Have a little children, man. You got brothers that's Lord willing going to have children. Brothers in this truth or sisters in this truth going to have children that they're teaching the law, statutes, and commandments, that they're bringing to um, wisdom, to, that they're offering to the Lord, right? So, hey, suffer the little children, man. Don't, you go, you know, you see a little child, you just want to, you know, going off. You want to beat people up. That's off, right? Hey, for there's just the kingdom, man. So, better be, I'm going to get Matthew 18 as well. You know, people got to, you know, be careful how you talk to children, man. Just because they're young, younger than you, that doesn't mean anything. The Lord can be dealing with them 10 times more than he's dealing with you. Right? That's Matthew 18, verse 10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. And this could be spiritual or a child spiritually or a child physically. And don't despise a brother because he may not know what's right and what's wrong. And you got to teach him, huh? He may be extra zealous, extra fervent. You know, and he may not know, you know, he, hey, brother, calm down a little bit, man. Get your spirit in order so everybody can stay in order. He may not know that. All right, so don't despise him, man. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. So a baby's cry, hey, relax. <laughs> right? And you've got the angels watching, you know. Don't despise the little one. All right, we kind of uh, switch topics. On the same topic, but we're going to um, take a little turn through the Spirit, right? Sirach chapter 6. I like this precept too, through the Spirit. All right, Sirach chapter 6, verse 18. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. Hey, so gather instruction from thy youth up, man. Don't wait until you're 43 years old to gather up instruction, man. Or until you you know, 28 years old. Now, now you want to learn. Now you want to take it seriously. That's off, right? My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. So shalt thou find wisdom till thine old age, man. Start early, man. If the most I bless you with knowledge and understanding early, man, hey, go ahead and get into it. If the most I bless you, then know that you're an Israelite, man. Take it seriously, man. That's one of the things that I wish I would have um, done through the spirit when the, when the most I showed me that I, I was an Israelite. I wish I would have taken it more serious in my youth. Right, but hey, now all praise to the Most High, taking it seriously. All praises to Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Kabbalah. Or women, I continue to take it seriously, right? But hey, from my youth up, man, gather up instruction, man, gather up the law, you gather up precepts, gather up history, gather up information, gather up wisdom, pray, fast, study, right? Hey, because you already have strength, man. When you hey, let's go back to that in our Proverbs twenty. It was twenty and twenty nine. The glory of a young man is your strength, man. Hey, so a young man, he's going to be able to fast for longer, more than likely. You may be able to hit a three-day fast, four-day fast. A hey, most high woman, a hey, brother might with in the Lord dealing with you, man. Hey, a five-day fast, right? Hey, that's the glory of young man. That's their strength. All right, so hey, while you're young, hey, be strong, man. Gather up strength. Get gather up grace and favor with the Lord, man. Pray. All right, um, I'm going to go to uh, Psalms. We go here right here. Psalm seventy one. All right, this is Psalms chapter seventy one, verse sixteen. I will go in the strength of Yahweh God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only. O God, thou hast taught me from my youth. So David was taught from his youth, man. Huh? David didn't just become king, and now I want to know what's going on. David was, hey, it said the Lord taught him from his youth. Man. And so the Lord can deal with people no matter how old you are. No matter if, if you just came out the womb, hey, the Lord can be dealing with you. Right? No, no matter, you know, you, your son, he may be four years old. Now he's starting to understand it, man. All praise to the most high. Maybe two years old. Now he's starting to read. Right? Now he's starting to, um, you know, he's in Deuteronomy 28. Now he understands Deuteronomy 28 to 68. He's kind of linking up the precepts now, man. Hey, all praise, hey that's mighty as Hey, so like, that's mighty, man. Your son linking up the precepts. He's four years old, and he's going over the dietary law. We can't eat pork. That's mighty. All praises to the most high for that. Hey, that's how, that's how David was. Right? The Lord hath taught me from my youth, and hitherto 
have have I declared thy wondrous works, man? So and David's going to declare his mother, hey, the Most High's wondrous works hitherto, man. Meaning a hey, now <laughs> and Most High woman forever. Right, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 8. Right, Wisdom of Solomon, the 8th chapter. I'm going to start at verse 1. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 1. Wisdom reaches from one end to another mightily. And sweetly doth she order all things. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. Hey, so um, Solomon sought wisdom out from his youth. How much more us, man? Who doesn't want to be a king, right? Who doesn't want to be the Lord's anointed, the Lord's chosen? And we got to seek out wisdom from our youth, right? I desire to make her my spouse. I was a lover of her beauty. And we got to love wisdom, man. Right? Especially young men, man, we got to seek wisdom out, right? Um, what uh, Ecclesiastes chapter uh, twelve? I'm pivoting right now through the spirit. All right, this is Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, verse one. Remember now, thy Creator in the days of thy youth. Hey, so in your youth, now is the time to remember the Lord, man. Right? Remember thy Creator, right? While the while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. So, hey, remember the Lord before all hell breaks loose, and before it's too late, and before you um, ass out, right? Rem rem remember the Lord now in the days of your youth, man. Stock up, man. Stock up on wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, because that's going to be the stability of our times, man. Stock up on faith. Because the Lord is not coming to save the unfaithful. All the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness, man. Huh? And hey, all men have not faith, as it says in Second Thessalonians. So now it's time to stock up faith, man. Huh? Now it's time to stock up endurance, Lord willing. Now it's time to stock up good works. B A S A S. This as the Lord told Peter in John 21, uh, 1, feed the flock. Right? Now it's time to feed the flock, huh? Now it's time to get ourselves right. Get your spirit right, brother, sister. All right now, now it's time for that. All right, we're gonna uh, go to Ecclesiastes eleven now. Ecclesiastes eleven, this is one of my favorite chapters right here. All right, Ecclesiastes eleven verse nine: Rejoice, O man, in thy youth, and let thine heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for these things god will bring thee into judgment man. so the lord is going to bring you into judgment in a in your youth know that man and what you do now it's going to have an effect there's now eight that is accountability man that's bs man when you 13 and then then the lord starts counting your sins i'm gonna search that up real quick that's absolute folly aids of accountability <laughs> when i first talk so like the Bible does not tell us exactly when a child passes from one condition to to awareness to the other, one condition of awareness. See, it's it's not it's not it's not in the Bible. An age of accountability. That's that's off, man. But the, yeah, this is off. Where do you find it? Is it's it's not in there. <laughs> Look. The concept of the age of accountability is that children are not held accountable by God for their sins until they reach a certain age. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Where is that in the Bible? And also I said, even in your um youth, right? Even in your youth, right? Um even in your uh youth, and the most I said you're gonna be brought into judgment. Our frequent loss in the discussion regarding the age of accountability is the fact. That children, no matter how young, are not innocent in the sense of being sinless. That's right. I went to a good priest after the Spirit, Psalms 51, where we were born in iniquity, right? And it's sin that my mother conceived me, right? So, and this, that's, this is all. There's no such thing as an age of accountability, and you're 20 years old, and then the Lord starts counting your sins. That's all. <laughs> that's, that, that's all. <laughs> Right, the Mosai, he's counting your sins right now. Right, Mosai, he's he's writing, he has the angel writing down everything right now. 
and you're going to be judged, whether it be righteous or whether it be wicked. Most of our women stacking up on these righteous works, right, so we can cancel out and nullify the wicked. All right, we're going to close out to the Spirit. Let me get on Psalms 119, the classic. <laughs> the classic, man, Psalms 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. So how does a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to the word, man, by taking heed to the commandments, the laws, the statutes, by reading the Bible, studying the Bible, and most and more importantly, um, applying the Bible. Right? That's how we take heed um there too according to the most house. Um hey, you know, so like it, that's how we cleanse our way. By taking heed to the commandments. Right, we went to First Timothy uh, earlier. We're gonna close out with First Timothy though. Right, this is First Timothy chapter four, verse twelve. Let no man despise thy youth, man. So don't let anybody despise your youth, man. Whether it be an elder, how old are you? People walking around, or you know maybe teaching. You know, brothers get this a lot up in Atlanta, man. How old are you? You know, if you say, I've been studying the Bible long and you've been alive, hey, that's all. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? All right, let me get Psalms 119. I'm on verse 100. All right, this is Psalms 119, verse um, 100. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Hey, if you keep the precepts, you're going to understand more than the ancients, man. I've had somebody tell me. You know, I'm there. Um, somebody said I'm 60 some years old. I've been studying the Bible longer than you've been alive. <laughs> hey, that's all, man. But hey, um, but hey, we understand more than you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashemi on the shot because we humbly try to keep the precepts, man. Let's go to Job 32. All right, this is Job chapter 32, verse 8. But there is a spirit in man and the inspiration. Oh, it's still like it. I'm gonna start at verse 7. I said they should speak, <laughs> and, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. Hey, so they, hey, hey, man, you sh these old people, man. If you're, you should be wise. If you're fifty some years old and you've been reading the, and you claim to read the Bible, you should be very, very wise. You should be very, very knowledgeable, right? If you've been in this truth for eight years, nine years, ten years, twenty years, you should be very, very knowledgeable, right? Verse 8, but there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Hey, so that may not be true, man. Hey, it's the spirit of the Lord. The spirit and inspiration of the Almighty giveth understanding. No matter if you're 12, no matter if you're 6, no matter if you're 55 and just came in this thing, and the most I can wax you mighty and mighty. No matter if you're 19, no matter if you're 6. Whatever age, man, it's the spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty that gives wisdom, that gives knowledge, that gives understanding. Not just because you're 60 some years old, that doesn't mean you know any damn thing. Or just because you've been in the truth for 10 years, you know, you don't say, but eight of them have been lukewarm and two of them you've been doing decently, right? That, that, that doesn't mean anything, man. It's the a, it's a, it's a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty that gives understanding. Right, so a hey, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. And be a hey, if you're a young man, you got to be an example. Right, so let me get that in uh, second Cor Cor Corinthians, I, I, I believe that's six and three. So, like, yeah, I'm just go to it, I believe it's six and three, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so like this is in it, but Second Corinthians six verse three: Give no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. All right, so and we we gotta be examples, man. We gotta be examples in this thing. All right, let me find a little one. All right, still like here. Yeah. Right, uh, let 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 no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers and word and charity. Right, so in in word, man, you gotta watch. You gotta watch your tongue, right? You gotta watch how you, just how you speak, man. I don't want to be listening to rap music and Twenty One Savage and them, damn, damn, damn little dirt and K Flock or whatever the brother's name is 
and beat Thang. Talking about you're gonna kill kill the op, start of the op, and cast it over two times. <laughs> that, that's off. Man, you have friends on, and you, you gotta be a hey, if you're in this truth, especially a the the just a young man, you gotta be careful about your words and conversation and charity. Right? Let's get it uh Ephesians five verse four. Neither neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient. Hey, so don't be if you're a young man and you gotta put it all away childish things. So read that in first Corinthians thirteen. First Corinthians thirteen verse eleven. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things, man. And be, coming into this truth, although you may be a child on the physical level, right on the spiritual level, man, you're turning into a man. You're trying to keep the commandments. You're trying to honor and reverence the Lord. You got to put away childish things. Right, put away filthiness and foolish talking and jesting, man. Stop acting a, a damn fool. Right, and charity and spirit and faith and purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Right? So I'm gonna get one more. I'm gonna get one more through the spirit and power of your hell about your shot and close out through the spirit. Right, it's Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So as you think in your heart, hey, that's how you want to be, man. If you think you're just a, a, a baby, a babe, a child, and the Lord's not dealing with you, hey, then hey, it is what it is. right? But if you carry yourself as a king, right, no matter how old you are, if you carry yourself as a man of the Lord, man, and you think yourself upon that, and you try your best to act within that way, try to fit the mold, right? Then, hey, so is he. Then, hey, Lord, when are you going to turn that, man? So don't think about yourself. This, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm, I'm only six. I'm only fifteen years old. My, my parents, da 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 da. Well, they know more than me. That's all. Hey, the Most High brought you into this truth for a reason, man. Think in your heart that you're a man of the Lord or a woman of the Lord. Think in your heart that you're a king or a princess of the Lord, man. That's how you got to think, man. Because, hey, so is he. Lord willing, you carry yourself that way. And most high willing, man, you're going to be rewarded. Right? We're doing this thing for a reward. We're doing this thing for the kingdom. You get our people out of captivity. All right? So, hey, bear that yoke in your youth. Most high willing, man. Hey, Yahweh by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shah, Barakata, right? La'ala, now with Yahweh. By Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shah, La'ala, now with Yahweh Shah, 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 How we are, how we are, how we are. With all praises and honor and glory due to Yahweh. By Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shah, Most high willing, that's what's edifying through the spirit. All right, Brother Shakar, Shalom.